and welcome to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now. We have a special show for you this evening. And of course, I am accompanied with my incredible co-host, roving reporter, Augustine Rodriguez. As he is traveling from LA back to the East Coast. So we're gonna give him a little bit of time to adjust there. And then Sherry Adesanya, who is also on the line. Sherry, hello. Hello, hello. hello. Sherry, I know that you and I had a chance to talk about um, a new book that my niece, Sydney uh, Scott, has yes. written. And um, it is The Body Image Blueprint. And I'm so excited about it. And also, yes. she has tag team with her mom, Robin. These two are extraordinary. And it's not just because they're related to me. Well, okay, it's because they're related to me. But it's because <laughs> the story is quite powerful. And matter of fact, I know you've been asking and a lot of other uh, fans of the show and such have been asking ever since I posted up her book, which we are going to talk to you about, which is RaiseAwareness.com. It's their new internet company. And Sydney Scott, along with her mom, as I said, Robin is also the CEO, COO and co-founder, but Sydney is also the CEO, author and co-founder of this uh, new venture, business venture. And their online business is here to share about the incredible journey and celebrate their success with all that goes with not only body imaging, but how these two have come to resurrect, if you will, from some hard times that have come upon them. And I can relate because obviously it affected me as well. But their story is extraordinary because it's a breakthrough story. It's a win-win story. So I don't want to take anything away when you go to the website. It's Raise Awareness, R-A-Y-Z-E, awareness.com. And joining me is a special, special moment of having my niece, Sydney, on the right, along with her mom, Robin, on the left, who are here to join us and tell us about RaiseAwareness.com, the creation of this online company, and how you can also get your hand on Body Image Blueprint. This book has been carefully, carefully made for just you. And I mean that with all my heart. But let me not take away from this moment. Sydney, Robin, thank you for joining us on the show. We thank you so, so much. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we're so excited about this and so grateful for this opportunity. So thank you guys. Oh, it is our pleasure. It is our pleasure. So raiseawareness.com comes with a backstory. And it's a backstory that is very, very heartfelt. So uh, Sydney, being the CEO and, and co-creator, um, can you share a little bit about the background of, of the company and along with your mom, Robin, and how you both came together to create this online company and what it means? Yes, of course. So I think Raise Awareness initially came, or I should say was born from my own struggles with mental health. And I mean, my mom has been one of the key supporters for me in this journey. So it was only seemed, it only felt right that we continue to do this work together. But something that I realized along the way as I've been working through my own mental health is that therapy and access to support is truly a privilege. And it's a privilege that isn't always afforded to marginalized communities. And I think after witnessing 2020, as well as going through a lot of the own, my own experiences within my life, as well as experiences of people I love, I realized that it is really important that we start doing this work in a way where mental health resources can be affordable and accessible to all communities. Absolutely. And, and Robin, I know you have to have such great joy and pride seeing how much of a transformation Sydney has come through and where she is. And now you both are shoulder to shoulder in this business. What has this journey and creation of the business meant for you? Oh, it's really awe-inspiring. You know, Sydney it's kind of downplayed her mental health struggles, um, but they were obviously very, very impactful. And that she could take all of this um, trauma and pain and turn it into something so beautiful to bring inclusivity to this world, which is so needed. Um, it's a gift. It's a gift to be a part of it. I'm so proud of her and excited. And I share her passion 
for wanting to destigmatize mental health and to um, help people understand how to advocate for themselves and how we can uh, provide more resources for these marginalized communities. Now you can't, can't think of a more a better time to. I'm sorry, Gail. No, no, no. Go ahead. Then. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I know. I was going to say, I can't think of a, just a more better time to talk about mental health and what we've all been going through this, you know, 20 and 21. It's like a collective mental health. And if, I think for people who never struggled with me, uh, mental illness or physical illness, it's, it's facing mm -hmm. everybody now. So everyone's kind of like, you know, their ears are, their ears are up now. And this, I'm really, uh, this book is just a just perfect timing and I just look forward for myself you know and I have a 20 year old daughter to read it as well so thank you I'm ready yeah, yes. I feel like 2020 yeah. was the catalyst event for yes mm -hmm. really start providing these resources and doing the work that needs to be done it's also it's something that we not uh we didn't expect you know just to go along with uh with uh what the share was saying we didn't know that we were about to have the year and a half we just had. Yeah. So therefore it kind of just, it, it forces something great to happen. Like we get to address things that we don't normally. So people, we already struggle with these issues with emotional health, with, but then now having the extra pressure of the year we've had, racial, political, uh, health wise, and then personal issues on top of that. So Thank you so much for, for doing what you're doing. It's really important work. Thank you. It means a lot. <laughs> and uh, we're coming up at 10 past seven. Sherry's going to take us into a break. Okay, we'll be right back with more of mother and daughter duo, Sydney and Robin and Scott, right after the break. Three, two, one steam so welcome back and thank you for tuning in to gail scott keys entertainment now don't forget that you can listen to the show by downloading tune in app and stay connected and we're having quite the connection ourselves with our special guest ceo co-founder and author sydney scott of her brand new online business raise awareness along with co-founder and mom robin before the break we were talking about the extraordinary feat of how mental illness and how we can guard ourselves and have this conversation the uncomfortable conversation but you know it's one thing to be in it it's another thing to go through it and if you have gone on to raiseawareness.com, I posted up on my Facebook page, it's R-A-Y-Z-E, awareness.com. There are also resources. Sydney, one of the resources is this, Body Image Blueprint. Everybody struggles. COVID weight, that's just the top of it. But there's also others. Um, myself, I know for a long time, being your age, wow. That was so long ago. That's okay. I'm over it now. I'm over it now. <laughs> I'm like, before I would just be like, hey, but now I'm like, hey. So, <laughs> so tell me, in the body image blueprint, I love this. I love this. I love this because this book isn't just a book that talks about how to love your body but you can participate. It has all different fun nooks and crannies, journaling, and this big wheel, I saw wheel of emotions. Hey, we got that. <laughs> I've been feeling that ever since, what, oh, those hot flashes? Maybe they should have a hot flash. But anyway. <laughs> the second edition. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly I got my copy, but can you talk more about this book that you have authored and what exactly the readers will experience, Sydney? Yes, of course. So actually, I recently wrote a post about this on Instagram that the body image blueprint was not initially made to be sold. It was actually something that I did personally, because during 2020, as I'm sure many other people also experienced, I began relapsing with my own eating disorder and falling back into a lot of my behaviors with anorexia, which often meant over exercising and under eating. And I realized that I was challenging, um, challenging, I mean, channeling <laughs> so much energy into something that was, that wasn't supportive of me. And I finally decided that maybe it's time to create something that can help me heal. 
And that's kind of where the body image blueprint began. It was kind of a way for me to not just cope with what was going on around me, but also work through some of the body image struggles I have, as well as kind of learn to live my life, no matter how my body looks and learn to respect it regardless. So I think that after creating that and checking in with some friends, I wanted to offer it up to other people based off of some feedback I got. And so to summarize it in total and what a lot of people will have access to if they download the blueprint is there is a lot of mindfulness practices, journal prompts, the emotion wheel, for example, just things to kind of get us more in tune with our body and how we want to live our lives beyond our body. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I sometimes forget this is my niece talking because I just remember her <laughs> so small and, and just, oh my goodness. And I was just like, what? And, and you break it down, you have some more guides here about mental hunger, scales, serving sizes. These are all the things that someone can look at like they can be enslaved to or empowered to have an accountability to. How did you come to break these down and really help the reader with these struggles when it comes to mental hunger? You were saying, you know, uh, mental hunger is real. It's a real thing. Um, and thinking about certain foods, well, eat it. And that goes against what we may be designed or trained to think. So how can you, how do you come to that, um, you know, conclusion to help others who are in the same? Yeah, of course. So I think we all obviously live in a culture that is heavily influenced by diets and trending bodies and how we should look rather than living our lives. And I think for me, one of the most powerful things in combating that ideology was recognizing that this actually isn't based in facts. And there's actually systems of oppression in place that have created these diets to keep people not only physically smaller, but holistically smaller. It's much harder to show up in a job or ask for that raise if you're constantly hungry and you're constantly worrying about food or your weight. So I think for me, I wanted to create something where people could not just feel the confidence within themselves, but know, oh my goodness, there's actual factual evidence to back this up. Like calories, there is no scientific process realistically behind calories. There hasn't been an actual backing towards it. They haven't even proven, or I should say they don't even understand the human metabolism yet entirely. So what I metabolize is going to be entirely different than what my mom metabolizes. And I think if we were to teach people more about this perspective of health, they would realize that your health also incorporates your mental health. And if to be a smaller size is not realistic for you, and it's causing a lot of that's not health. So I think that was definitely part of the reason why I incorporated a lot of the factual evidence as well. I was going to say what seems to be really cool about your book. I haven't, I'm going to purchase it and read it and give it to my daughter. And yeah, definitely. Because it is such a need. Oh, my gosh. And um, <laughs> now my husband knows. He's like, yes, guys. <laughs> For all guys, right? But um I was talking to a young man that really struggled with depression during this COVID and he couldn't get uh, the mental health that he needed because there's so many waiting lists mm -hmm. with therapists. There are, you know, and I have another friend who's a psychologist and she's like, her list is, you know, mm -hmm. out the door. And I thought, how sad somebody's hurting and they can't even get the help that they need. But what's great about your book is that um, the psychologist told him, you've got to practice a lot of self-care mm -hmm. right now. You know, and I think that this book is such a great tool for young ladies, you know, or women of all ages um, to practice that self-care. So can you talk maybe a little bit about, about your, you know, your own self-care? Yes, of course. So I definitely wanted it to be a space where journal prompts could kind of guide people to find their own versions of self-care. Because for me personally, a lot of my healing work was sitting with the emotions, but also finding something to help me work through them. So for me, self-care looked a lot like spending some time outside or checking in with mm -hmm. friends, or maybe I was feeling really sad that day and taking a moment to journal how I'm feeling, what's happening around me, what I'm noticing in my body and become more mindful of it so I can become proactive 
And that can also be a form of self-care that I found to be very helpful. So I, I actually have a question for Robin because it, it's such sure. an important place uh, to have, to be a supporter, to be a supporter of the close. I have close family members that I've battled with, 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 uh, believe me, with some of the things you've mentioned. And, um, and, uh, and that's, that's, it's important for us to be as supporters, to be educated so we can know how to be empathetic and, you know, how, how to be there. So, so Robin, how, what are some ways that you've been able to be a support for your daughter? Um, well, I think open communication with her has been the absolute crux of our entire relationship. Um, so I wanted to create a space environment that she'd feel comfortable coming to me at any time. There's nothing that she couldn't say to me that, you know, I wouldn't at least try to address. Um, I tried to make sure that she got all the services that she needed and even more than what she wanted, for sure. Um, so it's it's interesting because there's a little bit of a difference in the relationship um, pre-18 to then she became an adult and I was no longer in charge of her mental health and her health care. And that was a very difficult change for me. And so trying to switch gears and trust that Sydney would take the steps and get the care that she needed. Um, I think that also landed really strongly with the communication piece. So we can be good listeners. We have to be there for people. We cannot judge. Um, you can't put your preconceived notions about food or exercise or, you know, body dysmorphia. You can't put that on the other person. You just have to we have to be able to sit with the discomfort as well, right? Because it's not always easy to have these conversations, but we have to have the conversations, so. You know, and and Sydney, also like what, you know, you had mentioned how, you know, we already have enough, an expectation because of society, because of, so it's also a thriving industry. I'm in the health and wellness industry yeah. over 30 mm -hmm. years. So teaching people yeah. nutrition, exercise, martial arts, I have my own health and wellness uh, business right now. And, and uh, yeah, we're all different. Our metabolisms are different. Our bodies yes. are different. And, and what, what, you know, and, and if anything, for me, mental and emotional health is utmost importance. Yeah. Because the person has to know who, this is who I am. I have to feel very comfortable in, in my skin and who I, and not be, and not, it not be swayed or shaped by what society thinks or what the TV is telling me or what the music industry is yeah. telling me or the fashion yeah. industry. I just went to a fashion event and it's like, I'll tell you, it's like, I, I think about that. I'm aware about that because I know that yeah. the, the, that's a lot of the pressures. I have friends that are models. That's a lot of the pressure, you know, for, for doing certain things. And, uh, but yeah, it's, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, it's very important. I wanted to share that um, for both Robin and Sydney, um, you know, the, the name of the company, Raise Awareness, is, uh, has a really deep meaning for all three of us. And uh, Robin, I would love for you to share about that. And because sure. these two are my heroes for a number of reasons. Um, you all have tuned into the show. All of you who know me, who visit on Facebook, you know about the loss of my older brother, Raymond. Well, this is his beautiful wife and daughter and there are two others uh, that are also charlotte and uh, my nephew jordan and um so this has more meaning and when i say a hero this woman robin has just stood so strong on a foundation that could have crumbled beneath her feet and to be um from being married to being a single mom and taking care of all these kids um and we've had these conversations and the story just hits my heart because I had to take a deep breath even before coming on tonight because, you know, um, I, I just applaud you both. I applaud you both. Not, and, and again, this isn't about just because they're related to me. It's because I physically have seen what they have done. But, but Robin, you are extraordinary in so many ways as a mother who had to face a difficult loss and then had to become a mom and a dad. So please share about the name of the online business and the background story. Sure. So um, Raise, we were looking for a company name and um, the word Raise has so many meanings when it's spelled differently. So R-A-Z-E means to tear down to the ground. 
um, to raise up our AI essays, to lift up, to raise up, to rebuild. And then, of course, we have Ray, right? Or the Ray, as he referred to himself, <laughs> who is, you know, such an inspiration and from whom it's, I still learn today, you know, words that he said to me 20 years ago resonate today in different situations. And I find myself learning from him even 16 years after he's died. So the company name is kind of just a mishmash of all of the different versions of rays. And we can throw rays of sunlight in there because that was another one of his, right? So <laughs> but that, that is where it came from. I am, I am just peeking and I should have done this before the show and I apologize, but when you go on to raise awareness, you you will see not only Sydney and Robin's story, but here is the Ray that they were talking about, Aww. the brother. Aww. And um, Aww. so we look alike. I'm just the female. Version. We used exactly. to tease each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> but he had great better hairline than he had. That's why he looked familiar. I saw that <laughs> image and I'm just like. <laughs> and he looked better in a dress than me. I remember he was dressing up with one of his friends for a Halloween costume. And, and I'll never forget, he took the orange out of my mom's fruit basket. That's a different show. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm going to wait for this Thunderbolt. <laughs> so, so really the business is about tearing down the societal norms that are are so toxic and rebuilding a more inclusive world and that is what raises absolutely and we are going to come back for the second half of this show with robin and sydney the mother-daughter duo who have been starting a new online business raise awareness and you're going to have a lot of awareness so don't go anywhere sherry odesanya augustine rodriguez and robin and sydney scott and i will be right back after the break Welcome back to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now. I am your host, Gail Scott Key, and I am joined with my co-host, Augustine Rodriguez, who is a roving entertainment reporter these days, and along with Sherry Odesanya, who also is joining me. But the real break, the real interesting part of this show is the hour that we have been spending and continuing with mother and daughter duo, Sydney Scott and Robin Scott. Robin is um, also... Just before the break, we were talking about Sydney and, and the creation of this company. And for those of you tuning in right now, wow, did you pick a good half hour to join? And where were you before? You missed some great <laughs> stuff. But that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll replay it for you. But uh, Sydney is the CEO, founder, and uh, co founder, and also author of this amazing book, Body Image Blueprint, that I have posted up on Facebook. A lot of you started asking me how you can get to it. It's raiseawareness.com, R-A-Y-Z-E, awareness.com. And also, um, Robin, the mom, the extraordinary mom, is a COO, co-founder, who has been, uh, just the two of them are a dynamic duo, and they have been joining us and talking about the book, talking about also um, how we're going to share more, don't worry, of where you can get your copy and what to expect. And when you go on to the website, not now, because I want you to pay attention to them, just, just hang with me. Um, we're going to tell you all about that, but before the break, we were talking about the creation of Ray's awareness, and Robin did an extraordinary job of just talking about the different ways of Ray's, how it's used. Robin, um, I'm going to pick back up with you if I can, because with Ray's awareness, um, for a mom, we know that uh, there's been information highway, different platforms that our kids use, which... I know Sydney has used, and I love it, Messy Mindfulness, which is an Instagram post. It has all this information continued. But there have been some challenges for what she's posted because not everybody wants to hear the truth and how it can be just, you know, distributed. So as a mom seeing this, um, how did you feel about this when you had seen that the social media was pretty much giving a slap on the hand, if you will, for her speaking her truth? Um, well, I'm proud of her perseverance. She's extremely articulate. She comes from a 
place of education, of a desire to call people in rather than call them out. It's one of my favorite things that she's ever said. Um, and so it's disappointing, um, but unsurprising, right? That those um, people who are trying to bring inclusivity or put a spotlight on the ills of society are the ones who are being shut down. Um, I mean, I think we've navigated this in our lives every single day, right? So we live in a predominantly white community. Um, and so we face these challenges in person. So I'm, you know, thrilled that Sydney's taken it to social media. I am thrilled that she's developing resources. Um, you know, just, we're just going to continue to do the work, you know, so. So when you had mentioned predominantly white, so what we're talking about is a spot, a spur from George, um, the George Floyd incident and um, just how much there is really divide in our country and how we try to bring a melting pot back. So as you can see, there is quite diversity on our group as well. And I love it. I absolutely, and, and Augustine has that big leaning smile because he knows he, he can do even more versatile type of things. Um, but Sydney, for yourself, messy mindfulness. I love that. I'm, I remember looking at your blog on Instagram, and um, I don't know where you get it from because I'm shy. So. <laughs> oh, very, very shy. Very shy. <laughs> but you, like me, you go to the social media and you try to inspire and encourage. What are some of the topics that uh, you find are the most hard to talk about, but need to be said. Um, I think I can definitely put it into two different categories because there are topics that I have the hardest time writing about. And then there are topics that it seems that other people have the hardest time digesting. And personally for me, a lot of the things that can be really hard to discuss are my own instances with mental health and such as going to the hospital or needing extra support or self-harm, going back and kind of reliving those memories can be really hard sometimes. But I think it's from a place of what I needed to hear in those moments. So that inspires me to keep going. But on the other hand, a large part of the work we do is providing these resources to marginalized communities and discussing the impressive systems at hand that are blocking this from happening. And I think a lot of people get uncomfortable because I use words like white supremacist, privilege. I say, we need to defund the police. And a lot of people get on edge because I think they see this as we want to cause more divide when our end goal is to create equity and inclusivity and taking mm. action steps to ensure that it happens. So I have a question, Robin, um, uh, Sydney, just so because we're, we're all going to be primarily on, we're on the radio. So a lot of people, some people may see the video, but for those who don't understand the whole, could you describe the dynamic of, of your family and how that plays into what you're trying to do? So, so people can understand yeah, clearly what's going yeah, on. Yeah. What you're dealing with. Yeah. So I am biracial. My dad was black and my mom is white, but she's also Jewish. So we kind of grew up in Salem, New Hampshire, in a community that wasn't exactly always welcoming of any form of diversity, I should say. So I think we come from a place of wanting to inspire a more equitable and inclusive world. But I also think it's important to discuss the fact that I do hold a lot of privilege as someone who's biracial because I do have a lighter skin tone. And that is also colorism, which exists as well. But yeah, yeah there's a lot, of, a lot of isms, aren't there? There are. Yeah, there there are. Just yeah. like everything's an ism. But, you know, I want to commend you, um, Sydney, just for being vulnerable as well, because I think that it's very brave. That's mm -hmm. very brave to talk about going to the hospital for mental health. And I think you being vulnerable helps other people become, you know, be vulnerable because they'll think, oh, well, I'm not the only one, yeah. right? And I just think that's great. But I wanted to ask you, um, you know, our trials, you know, are always, you know, 2020. But so what would you tell your 12-year-old self from what you know now? Uh, wow, that's, 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 that's a, a difficult great. question. But <laughs> yes, you uh, tell. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I could give my 12 year old self any form of advice, it would probably just give it the space to listen to her and to let her know that what she's going through 
it's going to end up okay. And that mm. the people, even though it might not feel like it, the people who are fighting for you and trying to support you just want you to be safe. And if all you can do is survive right now, think to a point where you are safe and thriving one day, that is more than okay. And you're doing more than right. enough to get there. That was, that was a quick. Right. And, and what it, oh, I'm sorry, I was just going to ask, follow that up with, uh, with, um, you, Robin, like, what would you, you know, sometimes I think, oh, gosh, if I could raise my kids all over again, I could do a lot of things differently. So that's kind of the same question I have for you, just kind what of knowing, kind of, uh, I mean, you know, honestly, what you tell your 12 year Yeah, um, so it's, if I could do anything differently, I mean, we, if we could change the course of what happened, then oh, yeah. I would have had back that child who was just so joyful. So obviously Ray's death was um, cataclysmic. This is why it was um, kind of the jumping off point for Sydney's mental health. And um, I don't know. I mean, I think I just, you know, I'm trying to think if there's anything I would do differently. I, I don't even know, you know, mm. it was, I'm not even sure how we got through all of that. Time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it was, yeah. I can definitely say you did a really good job. Well, I don't know about that, but thank you. No, but she did. I, yeah, I, I agree. Hey, I agree. I absolutely agree that so, she did. Yep. I that's absolutely. right. You know, it's all, it, it, yeah, as a mom, it is excruciating to watch your child go through that kind of pain. And to Sydney's point, I just wanted to keep her safe. And whatever mm -hmm. that took, then that's what I was going to do. And so um, I guess I did do something right because you're still here today. Thank yes, you for you that, did. by the way. Yes, Thank you. Did. I appreciate yes, you it. Did. And yes, this is did. what I love about that, because in the book, I just wanted everyone to know when you go to the website, it's really, really important. And I didn't want to miss this because it's really important. I know Augustine's got a question. They do also include not only programs that you can also um, incorporate yourself into, but there are support lines for mental health, for National Suicide Hotline, support for uh, different um, lines of uh, LGBTQ and suicide prevention line, um, also Trevor for Life, all of these things that has impacted your lives is also an outlet for you to connect with others. So when you visit on their um, website, just so you all know, there are these different um, ways that you can get connected, you can get help for yourself or for someone that you care about. And you know, it's funny, um, not funny, haha, but you know, I had posted on um, for, for my um, friends that we all go to in the same church, the thing that I talked about was about mental health and how it's treated. So in our world, you know, it's not praying more and it's not saying you've got to do this. It's about just caring for someone, wrapping your arms around someone. You may not understand it, but man, can it make a difference in the world? Augustine, you had a question and I wanted to make sure that I allowed that for you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, Gail. Yeah, I was just curious as to, and I'm sure many of the listeners are because you were mentioning okay body image and all of that that's encompassed in that and then you also mentioned social issues and what you're encountering so how did those two did they cross paths did it did it make it more you have privilege but it was difficult for you so you want to increase your awareness so how, how do you want to how, how can you communicate to that to the listeners to how those two worlds intersected and how they, in your world? Yes, of course. So I think personally, it was my privilege that allowed for me to have access to mental health resources. And during that time, I spent a lot of time with Black and Latinx women who weren't able to afford a lot of those or were put in them as a last resort. And they weren't really, their social workers weren't showing up for them. No one was listening. And I think I finally put two and two together that if I want to advocate for other people to have access to mental health resources, whether it be the body image blueprint, whether it be support for depression and anxiety, I need to create a space where all people have access to those resources. And I think a large part in doing that is providing such things such as grants and our own resources to marginalized communities. And I think that's where the two intersect for us. Can you share about the other resources that are offered on the um, website, on your online business? Because I think that that's important too. 
Before you talk about the coaching, I do want to say that um, where mental health resources are so difficult to obtain right now, it's hard to get an appointment with a therapist that we are building a community as well. So, and it's not a replacement by any means, but it is as a means of support for people who need a little bit of, of a boost while they're trying to um, get in to see their therapist. So, yes, I appreciate yeah. you including yeah. that. Or yeah. starting us I think it's important. That. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I do as well. So um, we offer some coaching services or a community sense as well. So we have different levels. So if you are just looking to download the body image blueprint, have community access, we have like a Facebook group to offer some support if it's needed and access to our blogs, we have foundation, which is kind of just helping you build the foundation to begin doing this work more in your everyday life. And then above foundation, we have authenticity which is access to the body image blueprint download, access to our community space, blogs. And then we will also send a physical copy of the book because I found personally that being able to write things down helped me through a lot. Yes, yes. <laughs> just throw it up there. <laughs> it helped me process a lot more, our beautiful model. Um, and then above that, we have empowerment, which is the next two levels kind of create more of a personal connection between me and those involved. So empowerment is 45 minute group check-ins that happen bi-weekly on top of access to the download. You get the physical copy blogs in our community space. And then lastly, we have clarity, which is a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one coaching opportunity where we'll check in weekly and kind of both opportunities are to help you set some goals and move forward so you can apply this work for the rest of your life and not feel like, oh, I finished the book, now what? Um, yes, and so it also offers one-on-one -on -one support. There's downloads for the blueprint, physical hard copy blogs and access to our community. And I think it's important also um, with the books and the purchases of the book, those monies are going to support the work actually yeah. so we um we have what we call the awareness fund so 10 percent of all of our sales um is going into a fund that we will uh, provide scholarships and donations through the work but it's also i think the ultimate goal of raise is political reform which is kind of lofty right but um it's really necessary and so you know this is how we're going to get there yeah yeah I'm just, I'm just so, I'm so proud of you both. And um, this, this is just incredible. And again, we've been talking with uh, mother and daughter duo, Sydney and Robin Scott. Sydney is a CEO and co-founder of raiseawareness.com along with her mom, COO, um, Robin. And Robin, for you, this is a different path because before your careers have been more in, um, you know, in different areas, property management and working with attorneys and such. So, wow, is this a big change for you? A big left turn? <laughs> um, not really, actually. So it's, I've been in operations my entire career. So it's pretty natural for me to run the company. Um, maybe some of this, um, you know, political and social, you know, work is a little bit different for me, um, but it's so important. We all need to engage in the work. We all need to engage in these conversations and, uh, you know, I'm grateful to be a part of it. So. Augustine and Sherry, this, this is like, uh, this has got to be like, what in the world? Because, uh, you know, hands-on moms and, and getting involved, it, it's almost unheard of sometimes, right? Yeah, I mean, I think this, the, the book should be mandatory college reading, seriously, <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, really, I mean, my daughter's in college and I just, it's such a need. It is such a need and not everybody is, is, you know, and this is a compliment. Not everybody is, is, is like you, uh, Sydney, in terms of just, I'm going to be open. I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to deal with this head on, you know, and not sort of just getting lost and going down that, you know, just going down that hole. So I just, I think you're fabulous and mom, you too, oh, seriously, you. you guys are just, it's really, really, it's very, it's something really special. And uh, gosh, I really wish you all the best with this. And I'm sold. Oh, sure. thank you. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, it's it's, it's 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 important work, guys. Uh, thank you so much for doing this because not everyone takes their experience and their pain and what they've mm. gone through, and decide to look. Let me. How did I get through it? Let me help others get through mm. it. And everyone does that. Unfortunately, just like Sherry said, you know, there are folks that don't know what to do. They don't have the tools. They just they're not. Or we lose them. Yeah. We lose them along the way. They decide to commit suicide tragically or they decide to and it's not heard and then people are not helped but meanwhile here you're able to say no let me you're being super as sherry said vulnerable uh humble mm-hmm. and putting yourself out there you had mentioned before gail had mentioned something about you were having some flack or some difficulty or some haters uh, on social media is it because of the racial issues or because of the uh, Tell us a little bit about that because it's kind of important yes. that we talk about that. I mean, I that. actually have received death threats over discussing racial issues. And so that happens often. Um, and I think for anybody health- who touches my niece, let me tell you, <laughs> I will find you. I will find you. I will yeah, find you. Oh, no. <sighs> this is the first time I'm hearing about that one. <laughs> Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. And it's from and it will come from friends. It was actually old quote unquote friends that I had. And people will judge me and will say that like, oh well, you seem like you're like just messing up in life sometimes if in regard to mental illness. And I think realistically for me, I've kind of used it as a sense of empowerment. So and I also think it's important to recognize that I, I am safe and I do have a safe space and the privilege to have support systems, which makes it more empowering for me to be like, you know what, actually, no, you're not going to do this to me and you're not going to continue to do it to people who are also experiencing similar things to me or who are, have a darker skin tone. It's just, I'm not going to allow it to happen. As I said, as my mom mentioned before, I want to call people in. So I'm obviously not going to go off on people, (laughs) but I want to come from a place where this is why this is harmful. This is what, this is the consequences of your actions. And this is why we need to begin working together. So, you know, for conversations, for them to spark that type of thing, uh, let me stand corrected. I have a bigger bodyguard. Mm -hmm. We all do. And everybody knows me. I have faith. So he'll get hold of that. (laughs) None of that. None of that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) See, we got the backup here. So, um, but you know something, when people are afraid of something, they want to destroy it. Yeah. And so. And and I think. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I yeah, know Sydney's downplayed some of her own, you know, racial issues that she's had being one of the only uh, people of color in her grade growing up. And, you know, you throw in there that we're Jewish too, and, you know, that she doesn't have a dad. And so there are all these stereotypes out there and um, perceptions of why that might be, right? That why there's no dad in the picture. And and so we've, you know, we've navigated our own issues, maybe not to the same degree as others, but I think you've kind of downplayed that as part of the contributing um, issues with your mental health, right? The bullying and so. You know, I I just, I have to tell you, um, I I remember the most precious moment when, when Sydney was just, I think she was five and she was like, auntie, just come in here and sleep with me. And I remember the moon just hitting her just right. And I just wanted to hold her forever in that moment. And now I get to hold her forever in this moment as a young woman who is just so beautiful, so articulate Mm -hmm. and just gets it. And if the message frightens you, then don't be afraid. Stop yourself for a minute and look to the right of her if you're joining us, if you get to see this, or if you're listening, her mom, her mom is taking an active role. There is nothing more uh, courageous for one, but when you have two, how can you go wrong? So seeing both of you just being strong advocates, and, and I know we're coming up on 10 minutes, and I really want to make sure that we are throwing out again for the social media platform, but Sydney, you have another book that you're working on? I am. Can you tell? On oh, your aunt. I can share. I can share a little bit of I can share a little bit of a sneak <laughs> peek. Um, so I think what I wanted to do also was kind of for the people that who were work, working through body image or even the ones that aren't, I wanted to create a next step in the process. 
So I think for me, another pivotal point in my mental health journey was learning how to be kind to myself and how that shows up in different areas of my life. So some examples that this book will touch on is how do you begin to advocate for yourself? How do you give yourself the grace to maybe call in from work that day or maybe not turn in that assignment because it's going to be better for your mental health if you rest? How do you find the space for those support systems? And I think it's all about learning that we don't have to love ourselves, but we have to continue to respect ourselves. So I think that is definitely the goal of the next book. Wow. So, I know. I'm going to such <laughs> wisdom back here and, and I'm going to put her on there. So, Ooh. gosh, what was I, I doing when I was your age? Sid Sydney, you were so, Sid by the way, Sydney, how, how old are you? Because I've heard I'm 18. 21. You're 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, it's great to see. And, you know, in a way, it's such an opportunity that unfortunately you went through these experiences, but you're here you are bravely going through using them to help others and calling people in. I love how you say that because it's important we have these conversations. Like who who, who knew that all these things were, would ter, were intersect and especially at this time, mm -hmm. like after the year we've had the, 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 the you know, the ins, insensitivity or confusion about race, about all that has happened this year. I just had a great, I'll tell, say this briefly because it, it ties into this. I had a conversation with someone yesterday and it's a white gentleman who said, you know what? He was very sincere. He was, I don't understand people trying to erase history. I said, what do you mean erase history? You know, the tearing down of better statues, all these things. And, and so he was very open to the conversation I had with him. And I, and I just, I used a third party tool. I said, well, let me send you a video. It's a, it's a, a, a legal prosecutor who breaks down, ACLU prosecutors breaking down the history of Confederate statues, right? So that he was just, it made him afterwards, he was just thankful. He goes, I'm, I'm just, it taught me a lot of what I didn't know. I didn't know the history or how those things affect us today. So a lot of times people just don't, they don't realize, or sometimes there are people that don't want to know. So here you have that whole, that whole thing folded into the issue of, of what you're you're trying to help others with with body awareness okay wow you discovered not just not just body awareness but not everyone has these tools or resources like i have them and somehow i get treated differently because so you're aware of that and that's a, that's a good thing because it brings more mm -hmm. i mean it's a, it's a lot more you got to go through right yes, all the people that I are mean, responding and reacting <laughs> right because there are people that are you know it's it's all about really humanity empathy and understanding each other and yeah. we are not all just one thing. You yeah. know, we're, you, you, we're living proof here of all the things that you're doing and how you're using all of those to meet multiple needs. So I just think that's awesome. I think that's amazing. Thank you so yeah. much. And, and going along with what you're saying, Augustine, you know, with this gentleman, you raised awareness. Yeah, yeah right? raised awareness. Yeah. And call someone in. That's, that's right. Yeah. Instead of how, because that could have gone south, that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, and I love that you sent him information. And I also just wanted to say briefly um, to Sydney, I love the fact that it's just not a book, you know, that it's a, it's a workbook. It's a living book. Like you're giving people tools, you know, you're not just kind of spouting out things and then they're left with nothing and you have this follow up book. So it's real nitty gritty to really yeah. help people, to help it turn around. And I just, I really respect that. That's Thank fantastic. You. you have to mm -hmm. do homework, people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So get your pens <laughs> ready. Yes, and you have to yeah. visit the site, raiseawareness.com. And um, I know we have a few minutes and I, and I w wanted to, again, just, I applaud the both of you. Um, I'm really, I, I mean, I didn't even, you know, it's one thing when you talk about this and you never know where it can go and such, but wow, you both stayed the course and just, it's just profound. It's just amazing. So I wanted to um, turn over to you, of course, the websites, the social media platforms where everybody can follow up who is listening, um, Sydney and Robin, to uh, visit you all and catch up and also to get the book. Yes, of course. So you can follow us on Instagram. I am more mental health focused on at Messy Mindfulness, which is just one word on Instagram, as well as 
at Raise Awareness, which talks more about the social, social justice component of the movement. And if you'd like to look into getting our book, which I totally think you should, just going to put that out there, um, you can find that <laughs> at raiseawareness.com, which is spelled R-A-Y-Z-E awareness.com. I'm super and proud of both of you. Thank from you. The bottom of my heart. And again, for the haters, don't hate. Just think about it. <laughs> think about it. What you're hating is not really what's coming out of her mouth. It's what you're not ready to face. And if you just take a moment and breathe in, maybe there might be something that you find relatable and you could have a dialogue like this at home and with others. So please be kind. And for our guest, Sydney Scott, Robin Scott, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am so proud of you both. Thank you for taking the time to join us. And uh, even though an hour goes by, we're gonna be following up with these two of course i will because i'm related and i love them but i encourage you to do the same and on behalf of my co-host sherry adesanya and augustine rodriguez we want to thank you so so much for taking this time of joining and raising awareness to the facts of mental health body imaging and i certainly hope that if you have any questions, you follow Sydney and Robin online on their social platforms. I, of course, again, will be putting it up on my Facebook page. But thank you. Thank you for one that one person that we're talking to, maybe all of you, we'd like to hear from you. So join us the next time on Gail Scott Keys Entertainment Now only on Tap the Mic Radio.